Here's how to UV map anything in Blender 4.0, including previous 3.x versions. I'm using vanilla Blender here with no extra UV mapping add-ons or plugins. Also, stick around to the end where I summarize a bunch of tips in less than a minute. So the first thing we need to understand is what is UV mapping? UV mapping is a process of taking a 3D object in the XYZ coordinate system and converting it to a 2D coordinate system, which is U and V. One of my favorite examples to give students when learning 3D and UV mapping is look at clothing to easily understand the UV process. UV mapping involves cutting seams on your 3D objects so they can unwrap and unfold properly in UV space. Another way to think about it is if I were to take this shirt and cut it along the seams, lay it on the ground, that's the exact process that we're going to use for UV mapping. You can also just look out in the real world, you know, see whatever that you have on your desk and inspect it and find where these natural seams are. Of course, you have objects that just don't have natural seams. Something like human skin and orange or non-organic objects like metals made from casting molds. What you need to understand is that UV seams are unavoidable and their main purpose should be to minimize distortion of the UV mapping. There's always been this long-standing view that seams should be minimized, but in the majority of cases, that's just not true. Best practices involve placing your seams out of plain sight, but with the advancements of 3D software, this isn't nearly as big as an issue anymore because you can just paint over the UV seams in the texturing tool itself. When working with procedural materials, there are also other things like triplanar mapping, which do a good job blending between these seams, so you don't see any noticeable seams there. This isn't an excuse to just use cube projection and walk away, but the key thing to understand is that having seams are okay and you shouldn't try to battle that whole process. Now that we have a fundamental understanding of UVs, let's begin the process of UV mapping in Blender. So here we are in Blender and the first thing that we want to do is apply scale. If we don't apply scale when we unwrap our objects, Blender will apply whatever scale that we have to the UV mapping, which is going to skew our results, which we don't want. So select your object, press Ctrl A and choose scale under the alignment. With your object still selected, let's go over to the UV editing tab. If you click off the faces, you'll no longer see the UVs. So in the 3D viewport, press A to select all the faces to have them appear. You may or may not have a big mess of UV, so to fix that with all your faces still selected, go up to the UV menu in the 3D view and select project from view. The reason why we do this is to give us an absolute clean slate and it doesn't carry over any nasty UV seams or weird UV islands that appear from the modeling process. Since we understand where we want to naturally put the seams, we can begin selecting our edges. While in edit mode, press 2 on your keyboard to go into edge mode, then begin selecting edges. These edges that we're selecting will become our seams. You may notice that your UVs disappear, but that's because we're in edge select mode. If you have clean topology and edge flow, you can press alt left click to select the edge loops. To select multiple edge loops, hold alt shift as you select these edge loops. To select edges on a specific path, hold control as you select the start and end edges. Just holding control will continue to add to your selection so you don't need to hold control and shift, just control. With the edges selected, right click, then select mark seam. Once you mark seam, it'll highlight red which is exactly what we want. Switch back to face mode, press A to select all the faces, go to the UV editor window, select all the UVs with A, then right click and unwrap. And there you go. So you can break down UV mapping to four simple steps. Apply scale, project UVs from view to create a clean slate, select your edges using mark seam, then unwrap. That's it. This is how I unwrap every single object that I've ever modeled. Now that we understand how to mark seams and unwrap our objects, we can use Blender to actually select these seams. For example, if you go back to edit mode and go to the select menu and select select sharp edges, this will select edges based on the angle of the neighboring edges. The higher the angle, the sharper the edge. This can be a time saver on some models, especially hard surface models, but sometimes it doesn't work all that great and you spend more time deselecting edges than selecting the edges, but I still wanted to share this. We also need to do a little cleanup, so you want to select and orient your shells to make sure that they make sense. I typically like to make them parallel with either the U or V axis. With our UVs unwrapped, we need to review them on the 3D model. So head over to the UV editor, select new image, name it UV checker, and change the generated type to UV grid. Then apply new material and apply the new checker texture to the base color as an image texture in our material. Side note, double check that you're using UV under the texture coordinate node. If you don't see the texture coordinate or mapping node, let's go to the edit preferences add-ons menu and enable node wrangler add-on. Back in the shader editor, select the image texture node and press Ctrl T. This will add a texture coordinate and mapping node automatically, saving you some time. 
When I first started using Blender, sometimes the coordinate node would be set to generated, so I wasn't sure why my UVs wouldn't look correct even though I know I unwrapped them. So I always make sure to bring this up for anybody learning UVs in Blender. We can also use an overlay to verify that the distortion on our UVs are minimized. Start by pressing Control Spacebar to maximize the UV editing window. Then go to the Overlays menu and select Display Stretch under UV Editing. This overlay displays UV distortion as a heat map, with blue being low distortion and red being high. The goal should be mostly blue with some green since we're trying to minimize distortion, not eliminate it 100%. But don't worry, I'll go over some tips later to eliminate most UV distortions. Now we can pack our UVs. If you're packing multiple separate objects, select them all, press tab to enter edit mode, and A to select all your faces. In the UV editor, we want all objects and islands to be the same texel density, so go to UV average island scale. Now the UV islands are the same size relative to each other. Then we can pack our islands with UV Pack Island. These are the settings that I use for most models. I make sure to disable rotation because I don't want to give Blender that control and set the margin to something low like 0.01 to give us some padding between the island. If you don't, then the islands will be nearly overlapping. And there we go. Everything is UV mapped and packed onto the same UV tile with minimal distortion. Finally, here are some bonus tips. Avoid very long unwrapped UVs. Having them cut into smaller pieces will yield better results with packing and baking. Orient your UVs planar with the U or V axis. When you have them at odd angles, this will cause aliasing on your texture. To easily move around your islands, hover over and press L. This will allow you to have more control over the island as you lay them out. Another tip is you can select edge loops and mark seam in the UV editor just like you can in the 3D view. If your UV islands and checkers are distorting, just add more seams. For example, you can see the difference here between these two Mando helmets in the before and after. In the before, I only have a few seams for the unwrap. And in the after, I strategically added more seams where you'd naturally expect them. Along with that, a few seams are being hidden by accessory objects. But even with these accessory objects, I'd still do the same thing. We can always hide seams through texturing. If you found this helpful, be sure to check out my Patreon. You'll get access to my private Discord community with a bunch of fantastic artists, access to most source files for my tutorials, more in-depth real-time workflow videos, private tutorials, and access to ask me whatever questions you have. And that's it. This is the workflow that I use to UV map pretty much any object that I've ever modeled in my professional and personal experience. As you can see, it's not too complicated as long as you understand the fundamentals of UVs. After that, the tools and workflows are easy, so don't dread it. So with that, see you around.